Hello my friends. Today I'll be showing you how to make some crab apple mead. What you're looking at here is my crab apple tree. It's early October and all the crab apples are well ripened. So I'll be picking well oh, four or five pounds of crab apples I believe. At least four pounds uh, to be making a one gallon batch of mead. So I'll grab the crab apples and bring them and you inside the house and show you how to do it. All right, so crab apple mead. Uh, what I have here is some pectic enzyme. I'll be using this. Apples are high in pectin. So this is going to draw out all the juices and flavors and uh, prevent a pectin haze. It'll help it to clear. I also have uh, two yeasts that are very good for apples, or pears, or any of that kind of fruit. And this one's good for all fruits, the K1V116. I will be using the EC1118 for this. But that's uh, two good options. You don't have to use one or the other. You don't even have to use these. There's other yeasts available in other brands. Just I'm in Canada and this is uh, readily available and cheap and reliable. It's good. I get good results from using this brand of wine yeast in my meats. So, the yeast we won't be needing till later, but it's a good idea to take them out of the uh, refrigeration uh, 24 hours before you're going to use them. And the pectic enzyme we will be using, but not right away either. So I'll put that to the side. What I have here is just some of my crab apples that I've washed. Made sure there's no uh, little bits of anything. I picked off the stems. I picked uh, four pounds. This is only a few. I drew out just for the video. I won't uh, <coughs> record processing the entire four pounds. But it's real easy. I'll show you what to do. So to process these, of course, you need a cutting board and a knife. Or you can just put them all together in a bucket and smash them. But since I'm not doing that, I won't be showing that. When I do uh, cut them, split them, I'll put them into a container. Once I've broken the skin of an apple, apples are prone to oxidation. So I'm going to make a water acid solution using, uh, sorry, using some lemon concentrate, high in citric acid. This is going to prevent uh, or at least slow down the oxidation in the apples. And you can use it straight or you can dilute it with some water to save a few cents. So the old restaurant trick. So I'm going to cut the apples and they're going to go into this which is ready for them as I cut. It's going to prevent the oxidation. So if you have a nice white apple, you cut into it, you put it into this solution, it'll stay white. Okay, so apples have seeds and a core in them. So what I want to do is not cut straight through, but rather cut into it and then roll it, pulling your other hand away so you don't roll it across your knuckles. What that's going to do, you can feel it, if you're used to using the French knife, I don't want to just cut right through breaking the uh, slicing the uh, seeds apart. So if you can kind of cut around the core, see there I didn't slice through the seeds. They are still intact. The seeds contain uh, organic compounds that are <clears throat> toxic to uh, metabolisms on the cellular level. So uh, for a human, if you ingested a lot of the co compounds that are in your seeds, you may get an upset stomach or some other symptoms like that. I don't believe it. it is uh, 
cause any permanent harm or kill you or anything. But it can cause upset stomach. So yeah, you just cut them, throw them in there. And then the fleshy part is protected from oxidation. Oxidation is also something you don't want going on uh, with the enzymes and all that in competition with the yeast in your ferment. So again, oh another thing maybe too. I'm using a French knife, all around best tool to use when chopping things up. Okay, curl your fingers back so that the blade touches the back side of your knuckles. So when you're drawing a blade up and down, no matter how fast you're going, there's nothing there to cut off. And it's a guide letting you know where to go. So you curl in your thumb, curl in your knuckles, and use it as a guide for the knife. This way you will not chop off your fingers unless someone's bending over in front of you in the ice cream machine. But well, that's another story. So again, make a slice into it, pull your hand away, just roll it till you can feel. And instead of slicing right through it, you can sort of, if you have gone all the way around it, it just breaks apart. But after a while, you can, you can feel it when it hits the core, and it'll snap apart. Sometimes when they snap apart, it'll leave a bit of a corkscrew kind of a thing. But as you can see, it doesn't cut through the seeds, and that's what you want to do. So again, just slice into it, roll it all the way around, and then you can usually just pry it apart. may knock the seeds out, but you're not slicing them. I don't know if you can even see that. But... Uh, yeah, so that's all there is to it. I'm going to continue doing this until I have four pounds of crab apples sliced. And while I'm slicing them, they're going to sit in here again. It is uh, citric acid and water. Just use the uh, lemon concentrate. This will prevent or delay oxidation due to uh, the oxygen and enzymes in the exposed apple flesh. So I'll continue to do that, and then, uh, yeah, okay, so when I have them all, I'm going to drain them off. Okay, so here's two gallon bucket, it's going to be my primary fermenter. And what I have here is some... Uh, pure cotton uh, mesh bags. You can use any sort of nylon or brew bag or tea bag or whatever. Whatever fits your ingredients, right? These were really cheap. These are nut milk bags or something. I don't know what nut milk is, but I'm going to use my nut milk bag. So they come in various sizes. This one I believe is uh, 12 by 14 inches. But I'm just going to uh, strain these, get the liquid off, fill the bag up with them, and then I'm going to freeze it overnight. But uh, I'll bring you back when I have them sliced in, uh, in the bag and ready to freeze. Alright, I thought I had turned the camera on to record, but I uh, missed recording, filling the bag up, and putting it in the freezer overnight. So this is actually the, uh, the next day. Uh, if I can get it untied. So yeah, all I did was uh, process all the apples by uh, slicing them in half, basically. And uh, so four pounds of apples, all sliced in half, soaked in the uh, lemon juice and water so they didn't oxidize. And I just tied it up and uh, put it in the freezer overnight. Now, 
I have to add pectic enzyme. So freezing them will help break open the cell walls or the water will uh, freeze, crystallize and physically uh, punch through the uh, cell walls, cell membranes of the apples. So it will help extract the juice faster. But as it thaws, I'm going to add so I'm going to add my water and honey and pectic enzyme right here. As it thaws the room's temperature, the pectic enzyme will do its work and once it's at room temperature, I will uh, start my yeast and add the yeast to it. So, I'll be right back with the honey and water and add the pectic enzyme. Okay, so what I have here is uh, the honey and water already mixed. This is uh, my honey from this summer. It's almost clear, um, mostly clover, a little bit of dandelion, other wildflowers late in the season, but predominantly a clover wildflower honey. Uh, this is uh, water I washed uh, wax cappings with and a specific gravity so it's four liters of water just over a gallon of water with a specific gravity of 1.110 and I'll be adding this to to the fruit and then adding the pectin letting it sit I'll take another gravity reading at that point I don't expect the the crab apples to have too much sugar but it might uh, affect the reading so I'll be doing uh, another reading but uh, so far this works out to be uh, if it ferments dry would be about 14 percent just this honey and water mixture here so I'm gonna add this to this just by pouring it in it's already stirred together like I said it's it's a, it's a wash from cleaning wax it is uh, honey that would otherwise be uh, wasted uh, using a melter to process the wax or washing the wax uh, by any uh, heating method or anything like that Usually it gets thrown in the compost. Okay, so this time it's going to be made in the mead, along with the crab apples, which usually just get left for the animals. So pectic enzyme. So for one gallon, it suggests using one half teaspoon. I'm going to add an entire teaspoon. Apples are very high in pectin. If you're making this recipe at home, you're using store-bought honey or honey that uh, you haven't uh, harvested yourself and don't know what they've been fed or if they've been fed too much sugar or something I would recommend at, uh, using also uh, yeast nutrients in this recipe but that's something I won't be using so you're going to sprinkle that in there I doubled the amount, it's not going to affect anything in a negative way but it will help uh, break down that apple pectin. And I just got a sanitized spatula, silicone spatula out of the uh, sanitizer bucket. It's going to give it a stir, get that pectic enzyme working in there. And again, this is why for one gallon batches, I swear by buckets and pails, you want to add fruit. This is uh, four pounds of fruit. I've seen recipes as high as uh, six pounds of crab apples or apples for one gallon batch. So two more pounds in here, probably another inch or two. And it doesn't leave much head space. And this is a two gallon uh, fermenter. I also don't have any extra water in here in case uh, you know 
still, e even though this is, you know, five, six full, what I mean to say is I may not even get a gallon out of this. So if you're trying to attempt a recipe like this, like make a crab apple mead in a one gallon glass carboy, first of all, you'll be all day shoving little bits of apple through your small opening. But uh, you know, I don't know how much you'd get, maybe a pint out of it when it was finished. I, I, I wouldn't know. I, I don't ferment like that. But as you can see with your own eyes, this is a one gallon ferment and there's already very little room in here. Which is fine. This is enough room. If it gets too active, I'll just put a towel over top. It, there'll be no problem. Uh, but I got a lid in an airlock. It'll be fine. But yeah, so that's going to sit there. The recommended time on the bag. Of course, the bag's very clear with what it does and the directions are on it. But uh, recommends you uh, add this one hour before you start the fermentation. So I'm going to leave it a little longer than that. You can leave it overnight. You leave it for a day. Uh, if you're going to leave it for you know a longer period of time, like up to a day or 48 hours or something. Maybe don't put the honey in, just some water and the, uh, and if you like to use Camden tablets, this is the time to use it. But I don't want sulfates in my meads. I don't want any uh, harsh chemicals that will give you headaches or intestinal discomfort, right? I want uh, it to be an enjoyable experience, chemical free, right? These are, you know, crab apples from my own tree, never been sprayed with nothing. Nothing gets sprayed on the ground around them. They're perfectly uh, organic. You know, the honey is from my own bees, again, natural organic beekeeper. Uh, the only thing in here that's not from me is going to be the yeast, uh, the pectic enzyme, and uh, the bottled spring water. But uh, I'd use my own water, but it's extremely hard, and soft water makes better ye uh, meads. So I'm just going, going to uh, throw a lid on this. necessary to put an airlock or anything on it but what I am going to do this was in the sanitizer water I probably shook the hell out of the camera okay it's on there good enough I don't need to make it difficult to take it off so what I am going to do you know, put it on a little better it is fall and there are some fruit flies flying around. As a grommet, okay, it shouldn't, nothing should be fermenting in here. At least not quickly, not for the amount of time I'm going to let it sit. But uh, there is a grommet, so I'm just going to lay a piece of clean paper towel. Use a dishcloth or whatever. And a little bit wet, it should stick there. And I just keep out any fruit flies or anything like that. So, <clears throat> this is going to sit, then all I have to do is come back, pitch the yeast, and uh, away it goes fermenting. So I'll bring you back when I have the yeast ready. I've let the apple sit with the pectic enzyme and the water and honey mixture for about six hours now, five, six hours. <clears throat> I lost track of time doing work outside, but I think it's about six hours started it before noon and it's around dinner time so uh, about 20 minutes ago I started uh, some yeast I just used uh, half a pack of EC1118 and I uh, followed the directions on the back <clears throat> to the specific temperature and I've let it sit for 20 minutes uh, for one gallon batch is even up to three or four gallons. Half a package is plenty. Um, there's no reason just to throw a bunch of yeast in there. I also like to make a starter instead of as opposed to just pouring it in uh, so that when you do pour it in the yeast like it's called the starter has a head start so it's already building a colony uh, has it's at greater numbers than any colony of wild yeast in the same time so 
<clears throat> Before I put this in, I'm just going to set it aside and take a hydrometer reading to see if any sugars from the apples have dissolved into solution and changed the reading. So I just got a cylinder, been sanitized, star san, and a hydrometer. Be interesting to see how much color the uh, crab apples give it. All right, it's floating. All right. Oh, yeah. Look like it changed too much. No, hasn't changed at all. 1.1110. 1 .1 so yeah, 1.1110 1 .1 is approximately 14% alcohol if all the sugar is fermented. And I'm using uh, yeast with a tolerance of 18%. So it should ferment dry. Now when taking a sample, uh, the container is sterilized. There's no reason not to put it back in. Even in uh, secondary, while you're aging, as long as you're sterilizing your equipment, you can return to whatever you take out back in. Now primary fermentation is in such a precious a little princess that you have to uh, that you have to worry so much. I mean it, just here alone these apples are covered in yeast and this is why they put Camden tablets in there just any bacteria and yeast or anything uh, <clears throat> to shut that down so that the yeast you do want will overtake everything else and kill it off. So now I'm just going to add my yeast. That was about a quarter of a cup of water. Again heated I believe it was uh, 35 degrees Celsius or uh, 95, 96 degrees Fahrenheit and I let the yeast sit in that for Oh, about 20 minutes. Just going to stir it in. Now because this does have fruit in it, it's going to need to uh, be stirred. This bag, you're going to have to push it down probably once a day. A little bit of a pain in the butt. <clears throat> in a pail because of the closing lid. Maybe I should have used a crock. But that's all there is to it. I recommend if you're doing this yourself with uh, store-bought honeys or honey you haven't uh, produced yourself and you're not sure uh, if the sugar in the honey came from nectar sources or just from being fed honey, uh, just being fed sugar, <clears throat> then I would recommend using a yeast nutrient. But this is raw, unfiltered, unpasteurized honey, and as of yet, I have not uh, had any trouble fermenting it. So, <clears throat> I'm going to simply close this off again. Again, everything has been sanitized, including my hands. Remember, always keep your hands clean when handling food or wine or meat or beer or whatever you're making 
you're going to put it in your mouth, <clears throat> clean your hands before you touch it. Okay, so <clears throat> all that's left to do is attach an airlock. I have it sitting in the uh, sanitizer solution. I don't think I uh, showed this in this video, but it's what I use to sanitize all my equipment and my hands and everything. It's an acid sanitizer. Directions on the label. Just make a solution following the directions. It's fairly affordable <clears throat> and it's food safe in the right, correct dilutions. You do, of course, want to drain off as much as you can off of things when using it. And actually, you can also use it to fill your airlocks. It's perfectly fine. Anything gets in there, it should kill it, at least for the first little while. I think I put in too much. Past a line. Gonna leave room for. Leave room for that middle part to be going up and down there. That's all there is to it. These uh, three piece airlocks usually don't suck anything back in because there's a tall tube inside uh, preventing that. As long as you don't overfill them, whatever you put in them will not get into your mead or your wine or whatever you're using them for. That's all there is to it. Now again, I'm going to have to open this up, make sure that bag's not floating and get all those uh, apples getting mixed in there and completely soaked into the mixture, nothing drying out on top or growing anything. So punching the cap, simply uh, taking the lid off, poking it with something sterile and uh, making sure it gets mixed around. I'll do that for probably the first week. But I should have action in the airlock uh, a couple hours, at least uh, a day or two. But that's all there is. I'll bring you back when it's finished fermenting, or maybe one of the times I take the lid off and show you what I'm doing as far as uh, pushing down the bag or what it looks like while it's fermenting. But uh, yeah, I'll bring you back and show you that uh, for you in a second from now, and for me uh, maybe in a week. And just like that, it's 15 days later. I haven't opened it up during that 15 days. I just lifted the uh, pail, gave it a good shake every once in a while. So I pried the lid open, taking a quick look. I'll show you what's going on here. No longer need the lid. <clears throat> Put that aside. Oh, the smell of apple, very strong. Has a nice little pink color to it too. So the first thing I'm going to do here is uh, take a hydrometer reading to make sure that uh, uh, it has finished fermenting. So I got a cylinder uh, clean and sanitized with star sand. And I got my hydrometer. I like to drain off as much of the star sand as I can on anything I'm using. So I'm using a uh, acid resistant, food grade stainless steel um, turkey baster. A wine thief would be better, would be perfect actually. This is also sanitized. So I'm just going to be taking a sample, seeing what the specific gravity is. I think the starting gravity was 1.110, which if it ferments dry will be around 14% alcohol. So not showing this very well on camera. So it's not floating, which is good. Well, sort of overfilled that a bit. 
Good thing I have a towel down. All right. That has dropped below one. Or it's just at one. Okay, so it has fermented dry. What I have here is 14% alcohol. It's a beautiful uh, pink color to it. It'd be really nice to uh, share the, uh, the smell of it. So I just got a glass here. And I'm going to take a taste. And the rest I can pour back in. So since it's uh, finished fermenting, there's no point in leaving it in the primary, so I'm going to rack it over to a clean one gallon glass carboy for secondary. You can smell the alcohol. A little bit sour, as expected from the cranberries. Sorry, cranberries, crab apples. Uh, the alcohol's not overpowering and doesn't taste like jet fuel. Let me uh, think about adding maybe a vanilla bean to my secondary. I think actually I'll just leave it and see how it tastes on its own. Yeah, even a large gulp. Yeah, it's not too harsh. It's very good. All right, so what I'm going to do is rack this over. I mean, very good. It's it's uh, only 15 days old. It's not not good. You wouldn't want to drink a liter of this. Um, definitely has that crab apple flavor. It's not overpowering. It doesn't uh, pucker up your mouth or your face like it would if you just bit into a fresh crab apple. But it has retained that flavor and I really like the color. So I'm gonna, what am I going to do here is I got a sanitized strainer and I'm going to lift the bag try to get it into the strainer. Just with my hands my hands are sanitized, washed first, and then sanitized. I just want to remove the bag out of my way, basically. While not losing any of the uh, any of the juices. Just gonna push down lightly on it and squeeze some of it out. Now you're going to get a little bit of air in this, into your uh, brew this way. But there's quite a bit of liquid still in here. I may just leave that for a few minutes. See if I can squeeze out any of the, uh, any of the liquid. Oh yeah, I don't know if you can see that very well. There's quite a bit of liquid in here. It's cloudy though. It wasn't as clear as the sample I took, but that's all right. You know, and meat isn't uh, an instant gratification thing. It's going to sit and age to attain a really nice flavor, anyways. And during that time, it will clear. And if I have to rack it twice, it's fine. You lose the most <clears throat> at the first racking. After that, you don't lose very much. Already, I got quite a bit out of it. And I've marked the side of the bucket with a piece of tape where there's a one gallon <coughs> level and it's around there. So if I rack off this, I should get a good, good quantity. But yeah, there's a lot of liquid in here in these uh, apples. Another reason I wanted to use a straining bag, it would be a lot easier to get that excess liquid without getting all the pulp 
this nut bag really works really well. So I didn't put my nut milk in it. I'll save you all that uh, horror, but the uh, fine mesh of the bag really keeps out the small particles. All right, I'm just going to keep doing that until I get as much of the liquid as I can and maybe let it sit for a few minutes and I'll bring you back for racking. All right, I uh, wrung the bag out and let it sit here for a few minutes to drain. Uh, make sure, again, if you're putting your hands in, into anything you're doing, make sure they're very clean. And, of course, if you're making meat or wine, you got sanitizer on hand at all times. So get your hands right in that also. It only takes 30 seconds of contact for it to be effective. Okay. Uh, cranberries I'll dump out of the bag outside and uh, the animals will eat that. But uh, this I will rack over into a clean glass, one, one gallon glass carboy here I have cleaned and sanitized. That foam is alright, that's what's left over. I had it draining, so there's a little foam left in it. But uh, as I fill it, the foam will push up and out. Okay, so you want to have <coughs> your uh, the container that you're racking into lower than the container that you're racking from. This is sitting on a table, so I put the towel down and the glass carboy on the floor. I use a auto siphon. Keep into uh, I keep it in the sanitizer till I need it. So I'm just uh, emptying out the uh, the liquid that I don't want in my mead. Sanitize the floor. Okay, so this is real simple. It's just some uh, food grade uh, PVC. So uh, this will, uh, this end will go into the carboy, right to the bottom of the carboy, so you don't get any water fall effect with the mead and causing uh, aeration. The other end is a plunger. This is going to go into your racking cane. Okay, now this goes in here. And very simple. One or two good pumps should get it going. And as simple as that. Well, something I forgot to do is prop up the bucket a bit. So you can take a uh, folded up towel I find is good. You can fold it up to different. And if you can just lift the bucket slightly, it'll help once you get to the bottom. And prop it up with a towel or something underneath. I didn't get that on camera very well, but I forgot until I'd already started. It has like a pink lemonade color to it. It's very nice actually. Quite happy with this. I enjoyed uh, coming in the kitchen while it's fermenting. The smell of it was wonderful. Still smells good. Smells a little bit of alcohol. Didn't taste as strong as I expected from the smell. But that's good. 14%. It's a decent amount, but yet uh, not overpowering. So yeah, it looks like I'm going to get at least a gallon out of this. Which is why I like uh, fermenting in buckets. I don't like getting less than my uh, the amount I want, right? Now if you do have extra uh, pint jars are good I'm gonna have to uh, stop this before getting to the bottom Yeah, that was a good rack. 
There's only quite a bit left, so I'm going to have to get a pint jar. And continue to uh, save what I can off. Whoops. I just mixed up some of the must. Yeah. There's maybe another pint there left. Less probably. And there's what you get. I got a gallon right up to the neck. Beautiful color. It's not the best light in here or the best camera angle to see it. There. Now all I need is a uh, bomb and an airlock. I've kept in the sanitizer water, my sanitizer solution. Make sure everything's nice and clean. Okay, so so bung there. What I like to do, a little trick. I don't like the bung coming back out when I'm putting it in, so. What I am going to do, keep stuff from flying in there while I'm talking to my friends. I like to dry it off really well with a uh, paper towel, clean paper towel. It was in a sanitizer, all the liquid on it is uh, sanitizer, so you know, I'll sanitize the paper towel and the surfaces you're using it on. Okay, so I'm clean not cleaning. I am drying off the inside of the bung hole and drying off the bung. This is going to create more friction and hopefully keep keep the bung in the bung hole. Okay, so that's the first part. You want a very clean sanitized bung dried off Dry off the hole with a clean paper towel. Get it in there good. The dry surfaces will create friction and hold the bung in place, hopefully. It doesn't always work 100%. But it works better if you put the bung in first. Do not assemble the airlock and the bung and then try to shove the whole assembly in at once. Rather, uh, put the bung in first. Now when you put the airlock in, it's going to help expand the bung. It's either going to push the bung out and up, or it's going to help it to seal it. Either way, no matter how well you think it's in there, you got to keep a good eye on it over the next few hours and even the next few days. But it will make a seal, and you can feel it, and it actually feels pretty good there. Right now, I used uh, sanitized water in here um, during the primary. And it was fine. And since my vodka bottle is at the other end of the house, I was topping off airlocks in my uh, wine cellar, mead cellar. <laughs> Just going to use some of the sanitizer water. Be careful to fill it up to the line, which is about halfway, just over halfway there. The only way you'll get a get dripping back into the mead is if you uh, overfill it. And that's all there is to it. I made myself a label, with the date and what it is. This is just a uh, luggage luggage label. I'm just going to attach it to. I really like these because uh, made of silicone. So if I get them wet or dirty, uh, it's fine. I can wipe them off. They attach easily to uh, to the finger holder on your one-gallon jug. But there you go. Some uh, crab apple mead, 14%. I'm just going to put the other bit into a uh, mason jar. I'll show you what to get all together and uh, do my outro. 
And there you have it, my friends. I got a gallon and two pints. So, more than expected. I love the color. I tried to put it out here in the light so you could see the color a little better. But uh, hopefully, it ages into something really nice. It already tastes all right. It smells great. So, I'm quite happy with it. I'll keep it in uh, these secondary fermenters <clears throat> until, uh, well, two maybe two or three months and I'll rack it over again for it to clear and any head space that's missing from the gallon size I'll add from the pint size along with any tastings along the way I can just easily taste out of one of the pints now with the pints too put the lid on finger tight and then back it off about a quarter of an inch just in case there's some uh, gases left to escape you don't want to make bombs but mason jars are Sorry about the fires. Uh, the mason jars are designed to withstand pressure, so it should be fine as long as the lids are not completely sealed. This has fermented dry, so I'm not too worried about making bombs. But if you found any of this entertaining or helpful, or you just want to hang out, I'm always welcoming new friends here on the channel, so please subscribe. <laughs> Hope you're having a great day wherever you are, whenever you watch this. Peace.